<laughs> Silvio is the owner of the Bada Bing Strip Club, the main business hub for Tony's crew, which provides Silvio with a steady stream of clean money. Silvio is one of the hallmarks of The Sopranos as acting boss in season 6. Something even more weird is that The Sopranos creator David Chase actually approached Van Zandt to play the role of Tony Soprano himself, in spite of his lack of acting experience. Chase liked his humour and intensity after watching him induct the Rascals into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've heard different reasons as to why Van Zandt didn't end up on our screens belt whipping Zellman and killing his nephew. I've heard that Van Zandt didn't want to take the role away from an actual actor. I've heard Chase more or less worked out he wasn't right for the part. And I've heard that HBO straight up rejected Van Zandt for the lead role because he couldn't fucking sell it. In any case, the part of Silvio Dante was written specifically for him as Chase still wanted him in the show. Perhaps the scene in season 6 where Silvio talks to his wife about him becoming the skipper instead of Tony after Jackie Senior is a meta reference to this. Silvio as a character really is something of an enigma I feel. It's hard to describe. I don't think what makes Silvio great can be replicated. It's a weird case where the character is the most overacted from the crew, a far cry from the likes of Tony Sirico as Paulie, an actual former mobster. Silvio is a caricature of a wise guy, a cartoon, a ridiculous NSL sketch character. The way he talks and walks is hammy and camp, the quick fire head nods like he's being electrocuted, the mystery as to how old he actually is, in that whether he grew up with Tony as a contemporary or was a lot older than him, an issue which the many saints of Newark only made more confusing. In many ways, Silvio is a comedic parody of a mobster. But because the performance is sincere and the character has some great serious moments, the instigator of arguably the darkest moment in the show, Adriana's death, Stephen Van Zandt as Silvio just can't be replicated, as the prequel movie showed. That's a discussion for another day, but in some ways I think it was impossible to make Silvio work in the prequel. Either you make him more normal, but then you lose the Silvioisms, or you make the actor mimic Silvio, but then it ends up like a parody of a parody. But with that being said, I don't think there's a Sopranos fan who would want Silvio any other way. He's a staple of the show, part of the furniture, and it's not as if Van Zandt isn't genuinely good. You gotta give him credit for going toe to toe with the likes of James Gandolfini. And like much of the cast, Van Zandt got better as the show progressed, and the show definitely played to Van Zandt's strengths. Sure, compared to other actors on the show, his range is limited. The character is not as interesting. We don't know as much about his private life as others. There just isn't a lot going on with him, and on his own, the character could be argued as being a little dull, as Silvio is best when he's playing off situations and other characters. So the actor's ability might be why he doesn't have individual storylines dedicated to him, which practically every Sopranos crew member had, Chris, Eugene, Patsy, Vito, etc, etc. But it actually works for the nature of the character, because it speaks to the fact that there's no nonsense and drama with him. He's the strong, silent type that Tony laments isn't around anymore. And Silvio as a character doesn't stand out as much as others because he's good at what he does, being a coltelieri, a business owner and whatnot. He's competent and thus is less memorable. Pussy becomes a rat. That animal blundetta causes a dysentery in the ranks with New York. There's Chris and Paulie shenanigans, but with Silvio? Nothing. Memorability in The Sopranos usually comes about because someone somewhere has done something stupid, like Paulie and the interior decorator's remote control docking station. Had Silvio not been ill and made the collection, there would be no issue, no drama, no conflict, and as a result, no pine barrens. If Silvio got involved in hokey slapstick stuff, it would damage the character. The conversation is never about Silvio and anything he's done, therefore the attention is never on him. We all know that Silvio's loyalty to Tony was unshakable. It was tested and was proven, most notably when he was approached by Bert Gervasi to switch allegiances when it was easy to do so, and Silvio kills him for it, something which actually put a target on Silvio's back as he showed New York he was unwilling to switch sides. But if you pay attention, Silvio pretty much never talks about his loyalty to Mr. Mob Boss. It's on display. He justifies it through his actions. Other characters, always characters who consider betraying Tony by the way, 
like Christopher, Paulie and the parade float, repeatedly go on about how close they are to Tony, how far back they go. And the veto actor even went meta and did it in real life, as I'm going to discuss in a future video. Silvio's the one man who doesn't need to iterate his loyalty because it's never called into question, aside from one scene where Tony asks Chris whether he thinks Silvio is the one talking to New York, which is really Tony testing Christopher and I don't think Silvio's loyalty was ever really seriously called into question. Even when Tony is in a coma, when the vultures like Vito and Pauli circle and try to screw over Carmela, Silvio does his best for her. That's not to say Silvio is without flaws, he does have one or two weaknesses. His attitude when gambling for instance. At one game he even says to Tony fuck you, which could have gone terribly for him if he wasn't such a close friend of Tony's. He also suffers from asthma, which gets worse when he becomes acting boss. There's positives here though, his awkward tenure as boss is a good deterrent for him if he did have any inclinations to replace Tony, as life showed him he wasn't exactly cut out for it. Some people are better at being number twos. He also holds a lot of Italian American patriotism which irritates Tony. There's that whole episode Christopher where Silvio really gets wound up with the Columbus parade and all that. Interestingly I have heard that the whole thing with Silvio being a patriot was actually written for Pauli but Tony Sirico was having back surgery so had a reduced role and the storyline was given to Silvio. I mean it definitely suits Pauli way more than it does Silvio I think. Other than that, Silvio blunders I think can be summarised in a few instances here and there, like not having his piece on him in the middle of a mob war when he and Patsy are ambushed at the Bing. One advantage of Silvio, in particular his time as boss, is that it gives us an insight into why Tony, as bad as a boss we can argue he is, was effective in many ways. Everyone was afraid of Tony, so no one second guessed his decisions. He was impulsive and violent, but that kept everyone in line. They were afraid of who next would be whacked of a horse or wearing the wrong shoes. Sill, on the other hand, was trying to keep everyone happy and the guys smelled his weakness. Nobody feared him enough, especially Vito and Bobby Bacala, two of the traditionally more mellow characters, who pushed and pushed Silvio until he was hospitalised and even then Bobby was selfishly more concerned with the small gains he could make before Tony came back rather than Sill's safety. Can you imagine that insensitive cocksucker saying They need an answer already! I'm going out of my fucking mind here! I, I'm liable to do something dressed! If Tony ruled against him, he'd end up as that year's special at Satriel's. But when Silvio is boss, all of a sudden the crew gets braver. Silvio Dante is extremely loyal and wise, he's an excellent communicator, doesn't step out of line and is capable of making the correct decisions without help. At the same time, he is incredibly cold and ruthless. Just look at the way he treated Tracy and of course the utterly remorseless killing of Adriana. To be honest it will be interesting to see him interacting with those who work with him more, work under him specifically. We mainly see him around friends. Imagine how terrifying he is to work for, for the Bing girls. For as comical as Silvio is, Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. His ability to murder without a second's thought makes him extremely terrifying. That duality makes Silvio a really unsettling and scary character. It's that disarming charm, that sociopathy hidden in a veneer as a clown that makes him really evil. Going back to him and Tony, you could really argue that Silvio is Tony's only true friend. Some might argue that the relationship is largely one way, that Tony doesn't appreciate him as he should. Others may argue that they have their bond and don't need to constantly venerate each other and exclaim their brotherhood. As with most things with Silvio, it's left unsaid. Silvio has to be escorted into Tony's room in the hospital, such is the gravity of the situation for him, earnestly holding his friend's hand as Tony holds his later when he is in a coma. It was for Tony that Silvio was hit and may never wake up. After so many came and went, the inadequate Christopher, the snake-like Paulie, the traitor pussy, Silvio Dante was loyal till the end. Silvio is the perfect middle manager, I would liken him to Jay Landsman on the wire. Silvio was way better than Tony at keeping the troopers happy and mitigating issues. He always seems to know the mood in the room, even when Tony doesn't or simply doesn't care. Perceptive and intelligent, Silvio possesses incomparable diplomacy skills, even with an extremely emotional and volatile man as his boss. 
I cut on you to be the most level-headed guy I got. Every boss needs a Silvio in their life, a guy who is reliable and loyal, but also not afraid to tell you when he thinks you're wrong, to offer an alternative perspective. Silvio possesses numerous great traits which are exercised routinely. For one, he isn't afraid to call out bullshit when he hears it. I'm gonna give that little fuck our mats, he'll never forget. As soon as we can locate him. He's in our housing project in fucking Bootin. The favoritism Tony still shows for our fucking cousin. For all your uncles down for you, I need to get into specifics. He tells Tony what he needs to hear, not what he wants to hear. Like when he calls Mr. Taipei personality out on not wanting to give into New York over the wild animal. And when Tony juvenilely gets it all in his face, he handles this escalation perfectly with his line. You need me for anything else? Tony is also unable to bully Silvio into submission, an example being the whole Columbus thing, when rather potentially get embarrassed in front of the crew, he has everyone walk out so he can talk directly with Sil. I can't turn the other cheek on this. I know, but we're running a business here. Don't you all got something to do? And Sil is so clever that he uses this talk to get Tony on board with his cause, using his skills of persuasion to motivate Tony by feeding his ego. I think the guys, and myself too, we need your leadership on this. He also calls Tony out on the veto situation, tells Tony he was wrong for hitting Ralph, and even gives him the options. Make him disappear, or make nice. You only got two choices. He's also full of wisdom and helpful advice, you're only as good as your last envelope. You know that. Also, for someone who seems to have the same constipated expression for six seasons straight, the man is pretty expressive without having to say anything, like his face when Tony tells the crew about Chris's death, which many fans interpret him as reading between the lines. There's also his face when Tony says, fuck that honor and loyalty shit, and when Tony says Vito is a come from behind kind of guy. He's a come from behind kind of guy. The Fat Dom situation probably best encapsulates him. He tries to get him to leave, recognising immediately that there is high tension in the room. Sil does his best to cool off Dom's remarks to Carlo, tries to give the idiotic Dom an out, but when Dom goes too far, Sil is the first to hit him. One thing I like about Sil is that he has an underrated, vague, but at the same time direct way with words. Let's say he shows up. You gonna kiss this guy on both cheeks? I need to get into specifics. I genuinely don't think there's anything to gain by keeping him around. Measures were taken. When I came in to open up one morning, there you were with your head half in the toilet. Your hair was in the toilet water. Disgusting. My business, I'm around a lot of women. That one ain't getting laid. Another interesting thing to note about Silvio is that his fierce loyalty is symbolised by his kills. He doesn't get his hands dirty often, but when he does, it appears there's a theme to the murders done by Silvio. He took out Jimmy, Puss and Adriano, who were rats, and Bert Gervasi was taken out for betraying the family. Though the Fat Dom kill wasn't a premeditated murder, it was also a case of taking out someone who stepped out of line. Everyone feels comfortable around Silvio due to his people management skills. This allows Silvio to gain information, to have his ear to the street, which is a key trait of his. He always seems to know what's going on and is aware of the backdrop concerning any situation. Remember when Albert and Patsy want to talk shit about Tony off the record? Sil makes an excuse and walks away from the table, reading the room and knowing the two guys need to vent. But as conciliary, these guys can't slag off Tony in front of him and he not report it. What if they say something that Tony needs to hear? And at the same time, he wouldn't want it known that he was part of a public meeting where Tony was getting slammed. So he walks away temporarily. But of course, he'll also be making a mental note about Patsy and Albert. There is a solitary crack in the Silvio loyalty argument. The Christopher Flortile situation. Acting Capo Chris who got the job over the likes of Patsy, goes through a Napoleon complex but is chastised by Tony for allowing theft on the lucrative construction site. 
Later, Syl gives Patsy the okay to steal floor tiles from the site, telling him he's got his back when it comes to Tony. When Tony confronts him, Sylvia uses those same vague but direct communication skills to mitigate the issue. Timeline got fucked up. While simultaneously sending Tony a clear message that this situation made him unhappy. It's controlled rebellion. This entire situation is a great example of how shrewd Silvio is. He knowingly disobeys Tony, sabotages Christopher, who had essentially become a rival overnight and now looks bad because of the floor tile job, gives the okay on a heist that will make Patsy happy, who was upset at being passed over, and he holds his ground in the basement meeting with Tony, because this was the plan all along and he knew a confrontation with Tony would happen down the line. He even has the money ready for him. It isn't just about Patsy. If anything, Silvio uses Patsy's name as cover and insulation for himself to highlight how he himself feels marginalised by Christopher messing with the hierarchy. Maybe he wanted to have control over Paulie's crew, or at least his name thrown into the mix. At the very least, there's several examples which suggest Silvio doesn't approve of Chris becoming a temporary captain, like the way he announces it and emphasising to Chris that the decision comes from Tony alone. It's the one time where Sylvia won't let a situation pass him, without him getting the appropriate recognition from the big man, without showing him that he, Silvio, is just as integral to the family as Chris is, and is able to screw things up if he so chooses. Chris is rising through the ranks via nepotism at the expense of not just Patsy, but himself. I'm still here, Silvio is saying, and I'm more valuable than Christopher. Syl tests the boundaries to assure himself where he stands with Tony. Tony gets the message, reassures his old friend, money is exchanged and the case is closed, all done in professional fashion. Plus the crew would see that Silvio acknowledged what Tony's nepotism for Chris was doing for morale and he did something about it. Rather than be an example of disloyalty, this situation was actually a very loyal thing to do, putting yourself in harm's way in order to keep a happy shop. There is more to be said on this situation, especially the symbolism with Silvio and the glue, but this video is getting pretty long. Still going, this asshole! So I'll end it there. So there you have it, a character analysis of everyone's favourite Al Pacino impersonator. What do you think of Silvio? Let me know in the comments section below, and let me know who you'd like to see get an analysis on them next. Subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, and thanks for watching.